is making headlines on Nigerian newspapers this Friday morning, starting off with the Nation newspaper. The biggest story there, we apparently have taken that, and that's about the anxiety uh, that uh, appears to be building up in seven states as the Supreme Court delivers judgments uh, today. Of course, uh, the states are Lagos, Zamfara State, Kano State, uh, Cross River State. Uh, we'll also hear the final verdict uh, as well as Bauchi and Ebony State. Seven of them will know their fate today and thus bring an end to all uh, the legal disputes as to the fallout of the governorship elections in these affected states. Other stories uh, on the nation, experts in cautious optimism on shakeup of banks by the CBN, just as the Institute of Banking of Nigeria backs the Apex Bank on its move in uh, the shake-up of certain banks uh, about two days ago. Road project contractors get green light on 1.5 trillion naira payment as minister frowns at workers quitting sites during the Yuletide. Mwosu Amonike Lawal give Afcon tips to super eagles as gold winners reflect on strategies. Of course, you know uh, that the African uh, Cup of Nations kick off uh, tomorrow, Saturday, that is, and uh, there's so much expectations uh, for Nigeria, the Nigerian Super Eagles uh, that are participating in this championship. Meningitis breaks out in Ogun State, AKT, as well as in Ondo, Oshu, and other states. Uh, another story uh, there as a front uh, page headline, that is, Strong Forces for Deployment Against Bandits and kidnappers. All right, let's move on now to the first news newspaper. Just beside the masthead, meningitis killed 190 Nigerians in one year. That's according to the Center for Disease Control, NCDC. <clears throat> Election dispute, Supreme Court decides seven governors' fate today as Apex Court delivers judgment on appeals against Songwolu Yusuf Mutfuang, Mohammed, and others. Theophilus. All right, so we move next to the <coughs> uh, Leadership Friday newspaper. And it says here yeah, Supreme Court judgment on easy calm in Kanu State, Plateau Zamfara. Please beef up security. PDP declares prayer fasting. APC urges calm. Apex Court reserves judgment in Ogun appeal. There, will be, there were deceitful narratives against Buhari, says Adeshino. That's in the Friday leadership uh, this morning. We move to the blueprint. It says, 2023 polls, all eyes on Supreme Court as Yusuf Lawal Mufwang, no fates today. In Wufuru Abiodo Balatu, Eno Triumphs, APC urges Kano Zamfara, Plateau supporters to be law abiding. And then PCL defies gravity, records 2.55 trillion naira profit in 2022. Supreme Court verdict, IPUB leader disbands legal medical teams. Oni, uh, Imam Akintola to head Union, uh, uh, Union Keystone Polaris Bank, kidnapping, military operate, operations ongoing to flush terrorists out of FCT. That's according to the defense headquarters. That's in the blueprint this morning. We move to this Nigeria. It says 585 million naira. Fish out better Edu's accomplices. APC chieftain charges federal government. Uh, don't conclude yet on allegations against embattled minister. APC governor urges Nigerians. IMF predicts soft landing for global economy in 2022. Suspended monarch apologizes to Saludo for conferring chief Tasi title on Senator Uba. Kano Guba. Police warn against violent protests as Supreme Court delivers judgment today. Mineral deposits fueling terrorism. Banditry in Nigeria, says Defense HQ. They plan to displace host communities to have free access to minerals. That's in this Nigeria newspaper this morning. The Vanguard newspaper says Edu Gate, APC governors Peter Obi back to Numbu on probe. Governors ask Nigerians to be patient says Tenubu will take this final decision after investigation as APC professional support president's move to send strong signal to government officials 
Don't spare anyone, Peter Abitel Tinumbu. Attacks. Governor Alia bars local government chairman from leaving domains. Alleged $6 billion fraud. Ex Prime Minister Agunluye gets 50 million naira bail. New bank CEOs will boost confidence, NECA, as BFI analysts say. 32 year old bank staff commits suicide over harsh economy. That's in the Vanguard newspaper this morning. The Punch newspaper says C Union Polaris Keystone, a CBN plans uh, shareholder summit, complies, uh, compiles new directors list. Apex Bank to discuss bank's future with stakeholders. New chairman, ED is to be named soon. Lagos NBA protests, a protester storm police headquarters over brutality against lawyers. Widows of soldiers killed in 1992 plane crash demand compensation. Netizens mourn as few bankers kill self, pen suicide notes. TB Joshua made childless couples to exchange spouses, says ex workers. That's in the Punch newspaper this morning. We move to salient times. CBN appoints Oni, ringing Imam others to lead Union, Polaris, Keystone Bank. Um, a female banker commits suicide in Lagos over hardship. My husband of 27 years hasn't been functioning as a man. Divorce seeking woman tells Abuja Court. Ogunguba, Supreme Court reserves judgment as PDP seeks fresh election in 99 polling units. Yobe women stage protest demand justice for slain housewife. That's in the Salient Times this morning. We move to Nigerian News Direct. It says here, federal government to probe 33 billion Naira electricity debt targets fresh 35 billion Naira investments. UBA unveils new digital offerings as chat box clocks six years. Lagos lawyers protest brutality, unlawful detention. Over 60 million Nigerians register for BVN ahead of deadline. After 10 years of meritorious service, Raji bows out as Odua GMD. Adeleke banks on revival of cocoa produ production to boost economic fortunes of Oshun State. And Supreme Court uh, reserves judgment in Ogunguba, affirms Governor Enno's election. That's in the Nigerian News Direct this morning. Move on to The Guardian. Renewed hope agenda. After honeymoon, tales of woes, frustration, trail to Nubu policies. That's in the Guardian this morning. Dangote refinery to reach full capacity in June as crude demand up by 2 million barrels per day. Female banker commits suicide in Ikurudu, blames economic hardship. Schools, banks, others shut as Supreme Court decides can governor. Terrorists kill community head. Nine others abduct women in Katsina. 2024 budget, while we settled for $800, uh, dollar, $800 per benchmark, that's according to the minister. That's in the Guardian this morning. The Daily Independent is saying, $800 million blocked funds. We may stop operating into Nigeria. Foreign airlines warned, uh, say $61 million payment is a drop in the ocean. Guba appeals, tension in Kano. Plateau, six other states, as Supreme Court gives ruling today. Affirms Enor, as a quiet bomb governor, please deploy armed uh, personnel in Kano State. Don't be in a hurry to condemn better. I do. APC governors uh, say they are still dealing with an allegation. Lawyers hold massive protest against police brutality in Lagos. Atinubu gets brief on prospect of $10 billion investment in steel sector. Our target is to get more governors. Legislators into APC Fultz's Gunduje, Edu, Shwaibu, Igodalu, Akabwe, others peak governorship forms as party rakes in 145 million naira from five aspirants. That's in the Daily Independent this morning. Finally, Nature News, Borno, governor, uh, Borno government rather sets a panel on farmers' herders' conflict. Equa farmers protest harassment, uh, seek help from Lagos government. CSO tasks Kaduna government, government to de develop policy on climate change. Abuja experiences growth in horticultural gardening. Federal government seeks verifiable list of farmers in Nigeria. And federal government reaffirms commitment to achieving food security. That's in Nature News this morning. All right. There you have all the uh, headline stories. Now you may just want to check out... Uh,
the stories you know, as it tickles your fancy. And of course, one of the prominent stories across all the papers, as we have seen so far, is the fact that the Supreme Court will deliver decisive judgments uh, during the course of this Friday in about seven states. And understandable, understandably, there is palpable tension. But Theophilus, one worrisome story also stuck out across the papers, and that's the story of the female banker yeah. uh, based here in Lagos, the Kurodu part of Lagos, who committed suicide in, uh, in the state in her office in the loo, the toilet of her office. You know, she left behind a suicide note complaining of economic hardship, apologizing to all her loved ones for the decision uh, she took. It's, it's such a sad, sad story of, you know, how the 32-year-old just decided to end her life. Mm -hmm. It's a sad, sad story, and it shows the reality of um, the sectors in Nigeria, especially the banking sector. This has been, um, the, the, if you see her suicide note, she highlighted a lot of things, and it's a, a, a reality that has been occurring over time. Many young people who are all going to the banking sector have a lot of tales of wars, and it's, it's a quite burdensome situation, and she felt like she had, um, nothing was going good for her. <clears throat> she felt like she wasn't doing very well, she was a no-gooder and all of that, so she had to end it all. And <clears throat> she ended it at the, the toilet of the bank she works in, which is, 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 a, is a gruesome reality. And it also shows, um, speaks about the mental health of everybody and how we individually handle things. Many people are going through a whole lot of things. If you interview many people, you, you, you understand that Nigerians are going through a whole lot. And for her to take this decision shows that it's, it's quite, it weighed quite heavily on her, which is uh, quite a sad reality. And, um, you know, what even makes it sad is that Amarachi Uguchuku, that's uh, the name of the young lady, well, not much is known about her marital status, but, you know, in the note that you talked about, uh, she spoke about um, how nothing seems to be adding up, and um, the police has confirmed <clears throat> the death and uh, you know there's also been a wide range of reactions mm -hmm. uh, from online we understand that based on reports we're getting online that she also combined uh, multiple jobs to survive she had engaged in shoemaking she was running a business uh, Donetsk footwear and you know there were people who also spoke about how she had you know done this and that mm -hmm. footwear yes. uh, for them she seems to be a very hard-working uh, yes, individual sir. left her phone if her phone wasn't ringing constantly her uh, colleagues would probably not have known that um, she was um, you know that something was wrong but at the point when the phone was ringing they still didn't know what was happening and where she could be for the phone to be ringing multiple times. There was to be a Only few staff who had to go into this who had to go in constantly ringing. And then we understand that the toilet door was, um, you know, had to be forced open yes. and that they found her beside a bottle of the substance uh, that she uh, obviously uh, drank, uh, which led to her death. But yes, you know, mental health continues to be in focus with everyone being urged and now more than ever before to speak out, you know, to, to talk to someone. She reeled out names of loved ones, her mother, and a host of other people uh, there. And, uh, you know, one wonders the kind of relationship she had with them. And she also begged God for forgiveness. But, you know, uh, you know, mental health advocates are using this, you know, very sad news once again to urge Nigerians to, yes, times are hard, uh, but, you know, there's still something, there has to be something, you know, for you to live, uh, to live for. There has to be someone, you know, when you think about what the life of that loved one would be, if you go the way you go, if you choose to go that route now, how do you think that life will probably worsen for that, those loved ones that you are leaving behind? And so just, you know, look out and speak out. And, you know, people should also look out for one another because we all get carried away by our own problems and we fail to see that perhaps you are even in a better place mm -hmm. uh, than others. But it also brings to question the role of regulatory agencies. Remember, that substance was banned, I think, some years back. Mm. And it, even, as, even with the ban, it's still in the market. It's still in the market. So it raises a lot of concern about... Um, how our regulatory agencies work to ensure that policies are implemented and put in place, uh, put in, put in place are implemented to the latter. That substance is not, was not supposed to be in the market, and so how she, how she got it, 
um, it's a lot of questions that some regulatory agencies need to handle, uh, answer at this point. But it's a sad reality, and we um, pray that the family um, has the fortitude to bear this loss. It's really a sad, sad situation. Absolutely, Theophil.